In Cameroon, I'm joined in the studio by Julie Owono. She works for Internet Without Borders and is their head, the head of their Africa Bureau. Hello, thank you very much indeed for coming in. I'd like to start off with a bit more context. There aren't just two official languages in Cameroon. There are two completely different systems, right? Absolutely. The Anglophone problem could be summarized not only by the language issue, but also by a conflict of laws, a conflict of systems. On the one hand, you have uh, two different colonial realities, which are the French colonial era in the Francophone bar and the English-speaking one, which resulted in two different systems, the common law system on the one hand, the civil law system on the other hand, the self-government system on the one hand, and the assimilization and centralized system on the other hand. And the question really in Cameroon for the past 60 years has been, how to reconcile these two visions and how to make them work into a united uh, government, into a united co country. And unfortunately, history has proved that until now, Cameroonian authorities have not been able to find a solution to that. The first solution was federalism, uh, which was fed federalism only in the name, because in the Constitution, even the, the, the predominance of French was recognized in the Constitution, 1961 Constitution. And then uh, there was uh, unification in 1972, uh, which resulted indeed in probably marginalizing further uh, the Anglophone uh, part of the country and the Anglophone population, which results today in the fact that uh, citizens, constituents, constituents don't understand why in uh, Anglophone countries they are governed by, uh, you know, préfets who do not speak English or who go to the, the post office and are met with people who don't speak English and who don't want to speak English. And this is, I think, where the marginalization feeling uh, was born uh, in, in Cameroon. Why do you think, though, it's now that we're seeing people take to the streets, we're seeing the Anglophone minority say enough is enough? Uh, historically, uh, we've, we've seen that in Cameroon, these federalism with this secessionist uh, sometimes uh, expression have uh, coincided with social and economic ordeals for the country. Uh, we remember in 1990 when the Social Democratic Front, which is, which is the first opposition party in Cameroon, uh, was born in Bamenda uh, in, this, uh, in the uh, Northwest region. And uh, it was born because at that time, the country was facing serious economic crisis, uh, which was followed later on by a devaluation of the CFA franc. Uh, today, the situation is less worse, but it's not that good either. Uh, we know that there is a, a, a um, commodity prices uh, crush in the commodity, commodity uh, crisis in the world, which has affected countries of the Central African region. And recently, the, the, those countries adopted several austerity measures that will impact citizens and impact the finances of the, of the country. And obviously, this will have a, a direct impact on uh, this type of, uh, you know, um, expression, such, uh, federalism and uh, marginalization expression by the Anglophone uh, region. But I think uh, separation is probably not, not the solution, in, in, in my opinion. Why is that? Um, because, well, it's been 16 years that both Cameroon have been trying to live together, and most importantly, citizens have accepted that reality. There is a language called in Cameroon, Cam Franglais, which mixes French, Cameroonian languages, and, and English. So it means that Cam for Cameroonians, it's a fact that we are united. Now, do the majority French speakers, uh, how do they feel about what's happening in the English-speaking regions? Do they have some empathy? Do, do they understand the, the concerns? They would probably understand if they were explained more or better what's Are they even state. informed about what's happening? That's the thing. Oh, that's a very good question. When there were a demonstration in the Anglophone part of the country, it coincided with the African uh, women um, football competition, the AFCON. Uh, and, uh, well, the priority was given to that competition uh, compared to what was happening in the Western region. But nevertheless, uh, thanks to social media, uh, people were informed of the fact that students had been beaten up, people had been judged, there were people who had been killed. Uh, but they were informed of the harsh and repression, harsh respon and re repression that occurred in the Western region. And they empathize, they, they felt empathy for that. So I think there is a, a room for dialogue compared to the, the, the policy of burying head in the sand that the Cameroonian government has been having for the past 60 years. Cameroonian citizens are ready for the dialogue. And I think that inclusive, uh, an inclusive dialogue uh, with anyone expressing what, what 
could be the solution is what uh, we could expect in, in Cameroon. You mentioned that it has come to people di dying on, on the streets in, in Cameroon. What else can you tell us about how the authorities have responded to, to this unrest? For the authority, there is no problem. Uh, the Minister of Communication, is that Chiroma Bakari, said it several times that there is no Anglophone problem. But if there is no problem, why are people dying? Why are people uh, demonstrating? I think it's uh, this, this is a wake-up call for Cameroon to assess really what has been the, the, the administ administration and the policy policy that we have been, uh, I mean, the country has been governed since 19, uh, since the independence. It's a, it's a time for an assessment of that policy. And it's a time also for the government probably to suggest other ways uh, of, uh, you know, managing those two parts of the country. Because a lot of people would say this is actually an opportunity that bilingualism officially could make the country even stronger. Absolutely. In the 21st century, having a country where populations speak both French and English is an absolute asset. Uh, and moreover, uh, the, the, the Western Southern Cameroons, as, as it is called, is also a, a, one of the, 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 the most vital, economically vital places of the country, uh, Limbe, where uh, the, Oil, I mean, the oil industry is so uh, lively, uh, Limbe situation in the Anglophone part. So what do you do with that? Do we want to separate from that economic uh, uh, opportunities or do